In this video, I am going to show you how you can add products to your Squarespace website. So you can see here that there's a car and signifies that there's a store on the site. But let's say you don't have that and you want to get yourself set up. I'm going to walk you through all the things you need to know to get set up. So I'm just going to start with a template that does not have a store set up and walk you through that. Now, there are a lot of levels to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you set up with your store so that you have a way of getting everything set up and you can customize it the way you want. Okay, so skip all of this. Okay, I want to button up here for a store. Well, the first thing I want to do is go to pages. Then from there, you'll see, this is really important. You see these little icons? These icons signify what you're using. These are pages. This is a folder. This is a blog. What you need to do is add a store. You could do it in the main navigation or you could do it in the not linked. I'm going to do it in the not linked. You just click on that plus sign or you could click up there. You click on that plus sign, you'll see store. This is step one. You create a store. Oh, there's only two. It does not matter. You just click on one, open it. You could change it later. Whatever you do with Squarespace design wise like this is not a big deal. You could always adjust the store, products, whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to name it products. One thing you want to keep in mind is the URL. So sometimes if it's not I don't know. Let's say I change it to store. You want to make sure it stays store, especially if you're launching a new site. You want it to be exactly what you want it to be from the beginning. I don't know why if you go to SEO. Let me take a step back to discard. You see this little gear wheel here? It's right there. Or if you go back to products and click this little gear wheel, same thing. You could change the URL here, adjust this title. Maybe you name it products. Tomorrow you want to change it. You can. Squarespace is so flexible. With SEO, don't know why it says store two here. That horrible for SEO, just remove it for now. You could fix it, figure it out later, but store two is not the name you want it to be. Boom. Just like that, you have a store, but there's a few things missing. Right now, if I click on this item and I add it to cart, check this. It'll put a little cart. Let me move that. That's a little plug-in, but it'll put a little cart down here. That's an okay look. It could work, but let's say you have a chat feature there or anything else. It's going to be hidden or it could get lost very quickly. So what you want to do is anywhere on your site, you want to do edit design. So actually, let me go back to the home page. It's probably a better place to start. And I'll just click edit here as it loads. There it is. Then you, what you want to do is hover over the header here. So you can do this on any page, home page, about page, any page. Click edit site header. Then from there, this is where you get to start playing with all the elements. There's three different buttons here. We'll go through that a little bit. Site title and logo elements. Let's click on that. Okay. This is where you add the cart. Highly recommend to do that. Ideally, this, this is a good size. You don't need to go too much bigger or smaller. You add the cart. Good to go. There's an account login. It's a different story we'll talk about in a moment, but let's do that. I think that's all for now. This is desktop. Let's see. You could adjust how it looks on different devices. You see the cart is showing up there now. So I'm just going to hit save and we're good to go and go back here. Click this little desktop this little button there it takes it back to full screen. Wait, quick save. Wanted to save. Okay, so you'll notice one important thing. That little button here is gone. So it's an either or. It's an either or. I highly recommend you keep it up here. It's nice for the desktop experience. And if you don't have a chat feature there. For mobile, that little button could be nice. It just depends on what you want to play with or what you want to try. But people are used to having it up here. So that is that. Then you go, let's go back to products. This is where you start adding in products. These are all sample products here, but you just click the plus sign and you go through that process. It gives you four options, physical, digital, service, gift card. Let's say physical. And it's going to give you this screen. It's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot of options. What you need to know is product name, description. Those are things you want to add. Image, price. Is it on sale? quantity. Those are key things. If you have variations, if it's a small, medium, large, that's where you do. You add a variation here. Organization is how you add tags and categories so people can select if it's men's, women's, blouse, shirts, t-shirts, shoes, whatever that is. You could set up categories and tags. And then here's where you could take a look at SEO. This is a lot of features kind of stuffed into this section at the bottom. It, it doesn't show you what the potential is, but let's just walk through this. If it's a subscription, this is where you could play with that. A custom form. Let's say you want to have a custom checkout form in the process. You could adjust that. Advanced shipping, self-explanatory, related products. If you want to show related products at the bottom, yeah, it's an extra feature in the commerce package. Custom button. If you want the button to say something else. Right now it says add to cart. You could change that. Social accounts, additional info. So additional info is 
If we go back, let me just hit save. And if I go back to this product, you'll see this is the main product. This is the additional info. So everything that falls below the main image is additional info. So if I go back here, if I click these little three dots and I click edit, you'll see now this is all filled out name, description, main image, thumbnail. These could be different. In this case, they're the same price, unlimited quantity, no variations, visibility, it's public. You could have it hidden or scheduled, no categories. Let me just add a category so you see what that looks like. Let's add, it's added it in, hit save. And then what I wanna show you here is additional info. You'll see it says enabled. So you'll see they have this like spacer here, spacer, this text seems like such a dated look and feel compared to how everything else is set up. And they even have a spacer down here, which is a little odd, but that's what it is. So you could use any of the features of Squarespace blocks. You could build anything in here. So if I go back to the top and click this little plus sign, you'll see you have every single block that Squarespace offers is here. So you could add that into your site. So let me click apply and then I'm gonna click save and be good to go. Okay, so that is all set up. Let me go back to the products. So now you add in all your products. Now, one thing you'll notice is it says plates here. So it's gonna start putting the categories here. Now you put all your products in, you wanna set up your actual product page, right? So there's individual products and there's your whole store. Well, you could double click into this page. Anywhere on the page, you could just double click or you could hit edit. And then from there, you could start adjusting this. So right now it says products on the page and it says plates. This isn't adjustable, but what you can do is add a section. I always start with blank. Let's start there and let's do shop all. And I'm just going to make this full font or H1. There's always an extra space at the beginning as of right now. So I'll fix that. And then section height, I'm going to do small. I don't know. I didn't design the site at all. So I'm just going to do a background. Oh, wow. It's set up like that. Okay. So let's go down here. So it says products here, but kind of don't need that. So you could make some adjustments here. So for stores, they have their own section of formatting. So let me click on that. There we go. Products width is it four inset full width is just basically ends up taking more of the page beyond the scope. You'll see it just fills up the entire page as you go along. Column spacing, rows, all that, how many items per column, aspect ratio of the image, text alignment, all that, show price, category types, top or sidebar. So you could do a sidebar like that where they all show up on side there. So category title, what would you do? There we go. So the category title is the entire main section, which will, again, we'll take a look at that in a moment. So there's a category title and then oh, that's a little confusing, but we'll take a look. We'll see what that looks like. Header text alignment, if it's middle or whatever. So I'm going to leave category title for a second. I probably wouldn't use it myself, but leave it as is. Breadcrumbs, I'll show you what those are. So let me click save. So let's say this cup here or this bowl again. If I click on this, that's the breadcrumb. That's showing up as the breadcrumb there. Cool, good to go. Okay, so there are all products here. There's only one category. So let me add a second category. I'm gonna go here, giving you the full rundown here so you get a sense of how this all. So we have plates, it's a category, it's made, it's, it's on the site, it's in the store. Now I'm gonna add cups and that one's checked off. I'll hit done, I will hit save, okay. So let's go back. Now you'll see this is how the products are set up. And originally when I clicked in it, it just showed everything because there was no separation. But now it's separating it by cups, plates, all of that. So if I click cups here, so it's all cups, plates, same thing, all plates. So you could do this. It's good to be extra descriptive to people, but if you want to adjust it, you can. So you could come in here go back and let's just say, let's get rid of the title. And then is this the breadcrumb? Oh, that's the breadcrumb. Oh, okay. So I misquoted the breadcrumb earlier. So that is how you set up a store. There are a few other things I'm just going to highlight to consider as you go through the process. I'm not going to go into detail of how you set them all up, but these are the other things you'll need to do. So you'll go to commerce. You'll want to set up a few things here. So you want to set up payments. So you want to make sure you add Stripe and PayPal. You want to go to the checkout, see how it looks, feels, all this stuff, how the email stuff works. Don't overthink this if you're just launching and this is your first store, but you could get into a lot of details there. Customer accounts. I don't recommend customer accounts unless you have subscriptions or you already have a market. So if you have a lot of business coming in, yeah, do customer accounts or repeat customers or is the way the business works, then, then you could do that. But you don't have to start there. And the reason is it's also the commerce plan, which 
you may start with the commerce plan. So you could set that up. If you do set that up, remember in the beginning when we added the cart, well, you want to add the login button there. So people have a way to log in. If they don't, if you don't, they won't have a way to log in. So if you click edit site header elements, you want to make sure you check account login there. So it looks like it's already checked. So I'd have to turn on customer accounts. Let's do that. Subscribe now. Yeah. Okay. You'd have to subscribe and then you can do it. Then you could have it. You want to get shipping set up, taxes set up, and if you need to, accounting in here if you're doing that. This is, I think, just zero. Oh, yeah, just the report. So, okay, cool. So all of those help you get set up. And then from there, okay, so there's one other thing I just want to bring up is back in these settings. So if you click on settings here and you go to advance, the one thing I'd recommend for any type of e-commerce store, you're doing transactions on your website. You want to make sure SSL, when you get your site live, is active, but you also want to make sure HSTS is secure. This little checkbox is check. The reason being is it's basically going to make sure your site is performing at the highest level of security on every instance, on every use. And that way it just helps with security for the transactions and all of that. All right, so I'll click save on that, go back. Obviously you could design the whole store. Oh, last one thing, you could design your whole site. But the one thing you could also consider is if you go to design, you could see here the checkout page. You could design the checkout page. Now this has its own process. So once you have your logo set up, you could say show site logo. So whatever is on the main site will show there. I don't have a logo, so there's nothing showing up there. You could adjust the color however you like, bring it to life. So everything you want, you want to change the button color if you want. This is your color. Well, you could add that and you can't customize this page further than this. It's like seven adjustments, but because it's a secure checkout, but this allows you more control on your checkout process. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any other questions, please drop them below. I can make more videos like this training and walking through of how to get set up. But this is the process of getting your store set up so that when people end up on your site, they have an easy process of buying products, making payment, getting notifications, all of that. Hey, congrats. You made it to the end of this Squarespace training. If you got value from this video, you will definitely get value from some of the resources that we've created. Please go to spacebaragency.com forward slash resources. The link will be down below in the description. And there we have a ton of eBooks, PDFs, and resources for you, for your website, for SEO, to help you grow your business. And just a quick disclaimer, most of the resources they're free. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. If you hit the like button, it tells the YouTube algorithm some very important information, but it also tells me that you got value from this video. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.